Hey guys, how's it going? I thought uh, we're going to go ahead and keep working on this oval. I was just doing some stuff here and I got this in the mail today. I did a little short on this, but I'm going to kind of elaborate a little bit more in this video about what's on this. And then we'll continue on with the build. Um, but I got the what we call a birth certificate. And I some of you guys may not know about this, so I'll tell you a little bit about it. You can go to, what is it, Classic... Uh, classic parts website Volkswagen classic parts website and it's a real pain in the butt the, the 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 whole thing to pay for it and all that is I always have trouble with it uh, some of you guys say it seems really easy I I've never been easy to for them to take my money it go have to do it two or three times sometimes to get it to work you know so finally I got this thing ordered and that's why I kind of procrastinated on it and we got the VIN number and all that in there. So what we found on this was really strange. And I really wanted to order this because I wanted to find out about the bumpers. Because one of the things I want to make sure I've got, I wanted to make it as original as possible. And I know it's hard to tell because I've done some work around these. But I was looking at these things really carefully and they looked like they were factory stamped. So I thought, man, this thing had overrider bumpers on it. And they were not available in 54 only in late 55 because late 54 had and early 55 had the egg tail lights like what were on this and i've no reason to believe that they have been changed because they were still the same color as the rest of the car just like the this was the same color underneath the hood was the same color everything had the strato silver on it Including this fender had the small hole for the overrider and it's got these weird mounts for the tail lights, which I always thought was strange. The brackets here, okay, and then there's the hole for the wires are way up there. So I think that it was kind of afterthought what they did is they just drilled the fenders for all the tail lights, even the eggs or the uh or the what was the other one, the hearts what were available in Germany. Or in Europe and then they just kind of mounted them on there and you could see it almost doesn't cover that hole and I remember that from back years ago when my friend had a 55 um, and we were like man this is weird why are the holes drilled like this maybe they're wrong or something it's just something I remembered from a long time ago and a long old memory you didn't even back then you didn't see very many early ones because like if you look at like photos of parking lots in Los Angeles and whatnot, you will not find something in the 50s, in the in the mid 50s, like 54, 55, 56, 57 pictures that you will see very many bugs in them. Uh, you know, you think they're really common, but they really weren't. It was kind of like, oh, you got one of those foreign jobbers. So anyway, let's get back to this. It's kind of interesting stuff. It's in here. I thought you guys might be interested in. Let's just get you up a little close, and we'll kind of go through this stuff. The VIN number, a 30 horsepower. I thought it was always 36. I didn't know they made a 30. Um, interesting. I I really don't understand that. Four speed gearbox. Well, duh. <laughs> Finish not deposited, which is for some reason it wasn't written down, but it was Strato Silver because we know what strata silver looks like and it was on the jams it was on everywhere on the car as you can see here that looks like strata silver star silver is a nice blue color so you kind of got to know your volkswagen colors it was on all the doors you can see up there there's some of it there and there's kind of a mild overspray of it everywhere inside so it definitely was a strata silver car so that was not really a question that I was looking for. thing I was looking for, so we're going to get to in a second, um, delivered to Competition Motors. Now, if you look on the Samba, there's a really cool, like, ah, really neat um, old photos of Competition Motors. I think it was in L.A. or Santa Monica or something. It's really neat looking. Uh, dealership, he says, like, there's good pictures of it. So that was really kind of cool. So it was a California car. It's been in California probably its whole life because the guy I got it from, it came from Santa Barbara. So it could have got bought there and then just driven to Santa Barbara and that's where they lived or something. But who knows. 
There's a lot of Volkswagens in Santa Barbara back in the day because it was you didn't need air conditioning in there, you know, the air cooled was perfect. So color wasn't deposited, but this is really weird. So it was like made two days before Christmas. Okay, in December 23rd. I knew it was December of uh, 1954. And so everybody says that December 54 is a 54. Now, this is kind of weird now. So did they go by delivery date? Or did they go by manufacturing date? For the year model, because it says here, year model 55. And then it says that it was delivered January 3rd. It's pretty quick to get them across from, from uh, Germany. Pretty amazing. And delivered to Competition Motors. And uh, delivered in Hollywood. I guess it was in Hollywood then. So that's where Competition Motors was. I was thinking Santa Monica just by the picture. But it's actually Hollywood. So special configuration. See it attached pages. So this is the special stuff that came with special models. There's M codes. So I don't know. Maybe somebody can interpret this M107. Maybe they just write down bumpers with overriders now. Because somebody said that they had on there is a code that said RAM protection bumpers. Maybe that was earlier and they just started making a bumpers with overriders later. I don't know. This was on the Samba, I read that. So, a uh, larger reflector in brake light. I, I, those tail lights are smaller. In my opinion, they look smaller than uh, eggs. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they're not. And it says larger reflector in brake light. So, that's what the... Get you guys up a little closer so you can make sure you see. Um, I don't get it. Mile per hour speedometer, we know it has that. Short distance interference suppression for wiper motor. I don't know. Maybe that means, oh, auto return. So they don't just stop in the middle. You know, they don't just stop like halfway through, you know, and just turn it off and it stays there. Probably has an automatic return. So I think I have the wiper motor for it. I'm not sure. Don't remember. So, uh, oh, lockable rear flap handle. So, it, yeah, I do have the handle for the back. And it was lockable. So, they added the lo engine lid lock. Of course, laminated windscreen, that's a U.S. model thing. And VW Radio Wolfsburg. What the hell is that? Anybody know? You can make your comments on that one. This thing had a radio blank in it. It did. It, it was looking like an original radio blank was still in the car, so I don't. I don't know why it would have its radio there. And uh, upholstery leatherette. So that makes sense that it has the red leatherette. It doesn't say that there's another option. It doesn't say the color. That's so strange. I thought it might say the color of the interior, but leatherette, that means vinyl. <laughs> and bumpers with overrider. So anyway, I just thought this was kind of cool to share with you guys in the beginning of the video here. And you guys are watching the build. I was wondering, you know, what was in this thing. You know, I didn't know what was going to happen on this. So it's been a mystery for me. So I know you guys are probably just as mystified as I am so but it does clarify that these were overrider bumpers on this car they did make them in 54 so people say they didn't make them it was no they made them it was an option M107 is the option so uh, anyway but I still don't know what year is it I don't know you know according to Samba when it was manufactured in 54, it's a 54. They didn't start the year model thing until, now what was it, uh, they're doing the next year until um, 
what was that, August of 1955. So August of 55 is a 56, according to what the Samba says. And they just sent me this. It says it's a year model 55. I'd like to see your comments on that. Very interesting. Anybody who's a real Volkswagen connoisseur, man, write a nice long one because everybody wants to know that one. That's weird. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys a little bit later as we get some more work done. All right, I decided I'm going to go ahead and paint the outside of this. That way I can see what the color looks like. I did modify it. Let's look at that. I don't know if you guys can even see the difference in the camera, but it's just a little bit less blue. It doesn't have quite that. It was just a little bit too much. It was so much blue that it was a little bit kind of not looking like strato silver. So this looks like strato silver blue. It's in the ballpark. Let's see. <laughs> I don't know. It's again, it's when it's concave like that, it's hard to tell. But that's why I want to paint the outside of this so that we can really see that you see that and you see the center of the door this has kind of got some kind of a dirtiness bleeding through it from fading and stuff and i think the metallics kind of rust a little bit so it was kind of an old school type of paint if you look at the center of the door right there and then over here i didn't i wiped all the paint off of that so that's original paint sitting there and i and again in the camera it picks up all the blue and it kind of accentuates it it's kind of weird but if you can see from this angle, it kind of looks the same. And that's where we're at. I'm, I'm looking at it. Outside of the camera, it looks perfect. And inside the camera, it still looks a little bit more blue. But anyway, it's close enough. You know, I'm not going to be able to get it perfect. But I want to paint the outside of it because then we can see on a non-concaved area what it looks like. So that's what we're going to do. So again, I sanded this off camera i just use a da sand it see all this edgy stuff around here that all has to get sand if you can see those marks that'll show up really bad so that has to get feathered in and then check it out by hand from here so i just do a lot with the da first then i come through and kind of feel it out check it by hand final sand it and uh, i'm gonna probably sit put some medallion primer on here and on here well, I got some of this chameleon stuff, and I'll just use that. It works okay. It's not as good as the medallion's a little thicker, and so is the Transtar. It's kind of a thinny stuff, but it'll do the job. So I'm going to put that over all the feathered areas like that. Anything that's feathered. I guess. They won't show up. Those ones won't because they're both primer. That's an epoxy primer that's cutting through there. And I'll just kind of do that. I'll leave this because I want to see that guide coat go away. And then I'll probably do a little bit of spot priming on that. And I'll just do a little more hand sanding. And then um, call it good at some point. Feel it out. Hand sand it a little bit more. And say, okay, there it is. And then we'll paint it. That's how you do it. And hopefully you got it all. That's when it's really nice if you have that powdered stuff you can put that on and then that sands off a little easier and uh, trying to sand off this overspray stuff is a little harder so i mean if you're really fancy trying to do a really good job that's when you know it pays off to buy that stuff but you know i don't know i don't want to spend any money right now so this will work just gotta do a little more work yourself so anyway there we go Probably said that three times now. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you guys a little bit later. So uh, again, I painted this off camera. I was supposed to film it, something happened. But I did verify that this color looked almost exactly the same as what was on the centers of those doors. So I had them, I thought I had it set to get together. I don't know if I filmed it or not, but I know I did some shorts on that, some of you guys saw, so. Anyway, this thing's painted.
All right, so I got this thing here pretty done. I just went ahead and sanded everything, got it all prepped out. It's ready for primer now. I think it's pretty straight. Yeah, a little bit of some surface rust there. It's pretty good inside. I'm going to treat all that stuff and then prime this here, hopefully. Shortly here, maybe I'll just prime it and then I'll worry about treating the inside because there's not that much on this one. But I'll do that after and then on the reprime I'll catch it. So I got a timeline here, running out of daylight again. All right, so this one I just got to do the primer. This one's got some dents in it, so I got that. There's a dent right here. And there's some little ones down here, stuff. And then I've got, or I just threw some body filler on this, and then I'm going to straighten out a little better. Put it on here and on there. Get that all ready. So, yeah. But the reason I wasn't doing these is because I was trying to get the color right. Now I've got my color where I want it. So I'm just going to run with the doors, get them all prepped. Get all the inside primed. And after the inside's all done, primed, and ready, second primer or whatever, then I'll do the other side of the door, finish them, and then I can start painting. I can then I, once that's all finished on the outside, then I can flip it over, sand this down, paint this first, flip it over, and maybe do the doors on the outside. Then I'll have those done and moved out of the way. Uh, and I've been moving stuff to the other side of the shop uh, to get ready to go over there i mean a lot of people wonder well how come i don't clean out my whole garage I, i'm really only out here like 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes at a time i have a lot of things going on so it's i'm never out here long enough to do a whole cleanup so i haven't been able to do that i'll get to it but it's just a matter of time you know it's kind of frustrating for me too i don't like working in all this crap and whatever but i've got parts here i got stuff in the way so it's just what I got to do to get through this part of this. Like I said, I wasn't really going to start this car when I did. I shouldn't have started it when I did because I have other things I got to finish and get rid of other cars. And I really need to get that Westy in here. And so now I've got to get this thing out of here. So I've got to protect it first. It's just not, you know. So we'll get through this and get some of the stuff painted, get the other stuff over the other end of the shop, get it finished, clean it, clean it up over there. And then I'll move the car over there probably put the body back on the pan over there just put it set it on it over here and then move it over there and finish some of the other stuff and then hopefully i can clean out this garage and get that thing in here that's the whole goal so anyway little by little that's how it goes one piece at a time it's never you guys think i'm out here hours and hours one continuous video i'm out here 10 minutes one day 10 minutes another day you know an hour another day it's just that's how I that's how it all comes and then all those clips all come together and make one long video and it looks like I did the whole thing in the day or something. It's not that way. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys later.
All right, you can only guess what happened here. It looked like the, maybe the rubber came loose and then got right here and they just shut the door. I don't know. This door was decide where the accident was, so who knows. But, um, yeah, that's way low. I don't know if you can even tell. We'll get that straightened out. All right, so I got everything filled in. Come back and let that dry. See you guys, see how it turned out. All right, priming in the dark again. <laughs> yeah. All right, got it all primed out finished you know, we'll see I, I just got to do the let this dry and then I'll block them once and then prime them again I didn't do too much to them and then uh, call that good and then flip it over and then finish the outside get all the inside outside body work done then flip it over paint it all right so we're looking pretty good here we'll just give this a little little spray magic let this dry and then uh, this is a, a lacquer spray can too so give this another coat resand a little more glazing here and there bottom edge I'm not worried about too much I mean, it's got some flaws in it down there, you're not going to really see it. It's down kind of low. So long as it's uh, in the ballpark. Not like a giant, you know. Might for the heck of it, just kind of clean this up and leave that. Maybe throw some paper over that so we can always see the original paint underneath. Kind of nice. Huh? So somebody knows, oh yeah, it was a Strato Silver car and it's pretty close to the color. I think this color is going to look amazing compared to what was on these things originally it it does it the color that they were in in from what i can tell really had a heavy cast to it and a lot of the cars i've seen don't so I'm trying to bring that back i'm trying to get that look we'll see how it turns out let's just hope it uh, works out really good it still looks like strato silver like the others but i noticed this color, if you look at it at an angle, it, it, certain angles it has a lot more blue, and then at certain angles it it doesn't. Sometimes it looks really blah, sometimes it looks really blue. So trying to hopefully get that same look with our new color. So anyway, we'll move on to the next step.
All right, so guys, I think we got these, this side's all ready to go. So now all I gotta do is let this dry overnight. Just gonna let it fully dry and then I can flip them over and then start finishing out the other side and actually paint, well, get it all ready to paint on the other side, completely ready, block sanded, last primer, just like what this is. And then flip them back over and then paint the jams after I get done painting the jams and I can paint the outside of the door, those are ready. So we got these here looking good. Those seat frames are done. These are done. And then we can get them in the paint. Or just this side's ready. So like I said, the other side I got to prep still. I do a lot of block work and everything. I, I don't, I'm going to got one good heavy primer on it. So probably one good blocking on that and then check it out and see if I need to do one or two on the outside so I think I look pretty damn good so anyway I'll talk to you later in the video Hopefully I can get this conveyed to you guys the right way. What I've got here, if you can see these little lows right here, and they're kind of wavy lows. So when I'm using a DA, um, a lot of people think you can't get a really straight fit, you know. You can get it pretty darn straight with a DA if you really are careful. And I'm going to tell you how that you approach this. So a lot of people see lows and they start just sanding right on the lows. Well, I know that this is low right here, right? So what I'll do is I'll sand around this with the DA and I'll feather my way into these lows. I, I don't even think about doing this. I've just done it for so long. that. But I thought about, you know, how do I do this? You know, you know how can I teach this to someone else? And so when there's lows like that, I'll feather them. So the whole idea is not to get, you know, a wave can be acceptable but a ripple it won't so you can get some degree of wave going on and you might not even see it a lot of people won't see it but when it's a ripple when it kind of does it fast that's when everybody's going to see it it's going to stand out so that would stand out and that's almost a dent so i would want to kind of feather i'd sand all the way around it and sand all the way around it and then kind of go over it a little bit and sand around it and then push less on it in the middle not really still I, out here i don't push much it's more of just kind of a moving the da you don't ever want to push on the da if you push on it you're going to move the metal that doesn't work same thing with block you can put waves in something with a block so same thing here is it's the same way i don't know if that's i'm cutting i think i'm yeah i'm cutting into the epoxy primer so i don't want to go through that if I think I'm going to go through like that, I'll stop. Okay, that's no more sanding here. I had a little wave there. I got a little tiny bit of red still there. Hardly can feel it. I think without putting any filler on there, I can go ahead and put another coat of primer on and fill that. The mill thickness from the primer actually helps fill in a lot of things. I've had guys that said primer is not for filling. You know, filler is for filling. It's like, you no, know, it's called primer surfacer for a reason, and it's designed to be a micro filler. So it's you know, and it depends on the type of primer you get. You have to get a high build urethane or the polyester primer, which they call spray bondo, but it's really not. It's totally different than spray. You could never spray bondo, even if you thinned it. It's a different grain it's finer so yeah that's i don't know there's a lot of weird talk about that stuff about things like that all of it works nothing the problems you win with that sometimes are the people that say it cracks 
and or it absorbs moisture and I okay it absorbs moisture anything absorbs moisture when it's sanded but before it's sanded a lot of times the surface can be completely sealed I've had polyester primer outside in the weather and I've sanded it completely off for months it was on months and I sanded it all the way off and there was no it didn't go through to the metal it didn't rust anything underneath it's because it was never sanded once it's sanded it's open then once it's open then yeah it can anything can absorb moisture so that's except for epoxy primer I don't think it will I still don't know if it will I don't know I wouldn't I still wouldn't take a chance on it I'm gonna anything that's sanded I want to seal up with a coat of something that's not sanded so these are the things I'm looking at like there's one there's one now that one I don't know if I can I can barely feel it but I probably sand like around over here I know that this is kind of sanding through sand around over here a little bit and then I'll kind of graze into it a little bit and I'll see if I can get it to go down those are the type of things you're doing when you're blocking even with a DA and and then the other thing you can do is this I still feel a wave right here and I've only got a little bit of cut through so I can it's really easy to do this with the powder stuff and I can just set that on there and then hand block that area again this little can of primer was this lacquer primer so you can say you need to use a long board you think that really helps much when it's you know when the metals not round not flat not really you don't have to use a long board I'm just using that for example you can actually use you're gonna get the same results with one of these little stiff blocks like this just don't push on it run it over it there's no my fingers this how much I'm pushing on it I'm not pushing on it at all and just kind of look at it and see what you got. I used to do this at the end with 400 after doing DA blocking on Mercedes Benz, BMWs. You could not see a wave, a ripple, a nothing by just using one of these on most surfaces. It's all in how you push on the block. If you're pushing down on it, they're going to get different results. So. Now yeah, we'll look at that. We'll blow that off and look at it. Yeah, it looks like I've got a little bit of a low right here. Just not much. A little more primer could probably fill that. I got a little bit deeper of one right there. Now that one marginally may show up. I, I do have enough primer on here. I might be able to. I'm just hitting the the uh, epoxy right here, and I might be able to take that down just a little bit more with the DA. I'm going to do it all with my hand. Not at this point. You know, it's, sometimes I'll do it by hand, sometimes I'll do it with the DA. It just depends. I try and do as much as I can with the DA because it's a lot easier. Especially when you got bad shoulders and you're older. But the results are going to be the same. So then I'll look at it again and get it all blown off again. Look at it. It just takes time. It's, you know, but that's the kind of the technique that you use when you do DA blocking. It's not like you blindly go over it with the DA. And that's where people make the biggest mistakes trying to DA block stuff. Is they'll be going like blindly over it. Oh yeah, there's a low. So I'll just, just push down on it. You do that with a hand block and you're going to get the same crappy results you're not going to get now let's just push down on the da you know just let the just have the da there and i like these kind of da's and why do i have one like this not have just the little palm sander is because if you have two hands on it you can work the da better so i like one with a handle and i put my palm on here and i don't put any weight on it i'll just hold it in place and shape it by holding this in and then hold this in and then you have two hands on there so you're going to get a better result you know if you use one of those palm ones it'll just kind of go with everything you know you're going to you know that's not the one i want i always want one with a handle 
So that's how I do it. And I can get a really, if you saw my Mustang video, I know a lot of people, people are watching that video. You can see there was no waves in that car. None. It was, and it was dark green. If you'd see it, and I did everything with a DA. I didn't hardly do any hand blocking on that car. Same as I'm doing on this. So I, you know, you can get a really nice result. It just depends on, you know, there's levels of it. You know, I could just do, go over it just quickly with a DA and never touch it with a hand block. And I'll get a different result, you know, and or I can, well, usually what happens is when I'm doing it, I'd see something like this and I'd just leave it. I wouldn't try and get it out. On this car, I might try to get more of that stuff out. You know, I'm going to try to get, this car's going to come out pretty nice. So I'm going to try to get a few of those things out of there and get it a little straighter and smoother and, you know, looking really good. So we'll see. And yeah, it'll have some flaws in it. I'm not going to get everything. It's usually decision making. I usually run into something. And I go, man, I don't know if I want to do all that work. I know it's going to take me a lot of time to fix. And I don't think it's going to look that bad. So, you know, this particular one, well, let's just talk about this. We got a body molding going right here. It's going to be right below it. Anything below a body molding is going to show up less. So always think of that. Your lower part of your car. I do less body work and blocking to the upper parts of the car where it's more eye level. So this is kind of marginal where this one is. It, you know, I could leave it there and it wouldn't look that bad, but if I can get it out, it'd be nice. So those are the type of things I'm going to do. And that's the way I do it is I'm constantly looking and making decisions. It's, it's artwork. You're not really trying to make something back perfect again. You're trying to make it look perfect. So anyway, that's, how body work and blocking is done. Hopefully that helps you get to yours. I'll talk to you guys later in the video. All right, so this is where I'm gonna draw the line. I've got a little bit of wave going in here, but you gotta think about some things. This is round, more round, it's gonna show up less. So, uh, you know, it'll show up if you really get the lighting right and you try and put lights around it on sides or whatever, you can probably get it to show up but for the average person they're going to walk up and just think that looks absolutely perfect so that's the kind of thing you're looking for you know when you do your blocking you're just trying to look and get it to look good not look bad and you know if i spent this much time if i was doing people's cars and i spent this much time as i'm spending on this i would have to charge tens of thousands of dollars to paint it and then people go oh that's a ripoff it's like no it's just the time that it takes if you want that kind of work you got to pay you know that's just the way it is and like for instance the mustang that i did you know there was two guys working on that for six weeks how could you do that you know how could anybody do that for even let even ten thousand dollars you couldn't you know not have good employees or whatever and pay rent there's just no way you could do it so it just takes that much time to do it that's why paint jobs cost so much money it takes a lot of work and time and effort all right, so I went ahead and uh, did this one here. And see, I've got a dent there, one there, and one there. That's pretty clear. Those are dents. I don't know. I just missed it or happened afterwards. Could have happened afterwards. So. Anyway, those, you can see, the rest of it is just super straight. I used the other sander. I like to use this electric one. I would just sometimes I don't want to use it, but because it is kind of heavy, but man, it sands so much faster and better than the regular cordless uh, air DA. You can get a really nice blocking with this, believe it or not. I say that I would encourage anyone to buy one of these and try it, and you will be amazed. It just works really good. If you ever done DA blocking, if you don't do DA blocking, then you know. I don't know, maybe something to try, but this one really works good. Harbor Freight Warrior thing, I don't know. They have them only now, I think, in Bauer. And instead of using three sheets of sand paper, I used one. So it doesn't, it can even work with a dull, it still cuts with a dull sandpaper. Where the other one, you have to constantly have a sharp paper. It's really important to have sharp paper when you're doing blocking. Otherwise, it just kind of mows over it and just kind of leaves it that way. All right, so we'll get that one checked out. It's got a epoxy on those areas. 
anything raw metal and I'll just put the non DTM on here since I've got it out I might as well use it up All right, so this isn't the color. Um, this is a base coat. I'm just gonna tell you guys what I do. And some of you guys are gonna like it. Some of you guys are gonna think that's completely crap or whatever. I don't care. Um, but what I do is I sanded everything with 220. And really, technically, everybody says to use 600. And I've done this, I don't know, for a long time. Uh, it, it, and so what I did is I sanded with 220 and then I'm gonna I use some other base coat that I have that's you know scrap base I save all my scrap base and I make up something as an undercoat and then I'll spray this on I missed a spot right there but I don't really care it's gonna be in the bottom of the door you're not gonna see it so yeah there's a little bit of sanding scratch coming through but when I put the color on you won't see it at all and that's what people go what you know i can see it you know you can't i've looked at it on my stuff before and after you can't see it so that saves a bit of time all that sanding with 600 takes a lot more time so especially on a classic car so on a, on a, on a, if you're doing like a fender or something like that it's not that hard to sand with 600 you know like a repair panel when you're doing a whole car and you're restoring it and resurfacing it it's a lot more work so anyway it's a little shortcut that I've been doing for a long time so I would tell you guys about it this is just this is not the right color we're gonna put the right color on now I just got the three coats of this to fill that in and then I'll go over it with the other I mean you could do it with a couple different things if you wanted to go cheap you could go and buy that the, the clear base coat it's called blending you could actually use this stuff spray it out ahead of time just to fill in the scratches and then put your base over that generally what that product's for is if you spray if you're doing a blend panel you spray it on the blend panel first some people say spray it on there after and uh in that when you spray it on after you color sand above it no, no no that's not what that's for you spray it on as a wet bed you put that down first and what it does is fills in those little 600 or 800 scratches in that in that blend panel and then when you put your color over it, you don't see that um, sanding scratch in the blend, which looks terrible. So that's what that's for, but anyway. And that's also another part of that product. That's not really exactly for that, but it works great for that. Um, it's actually for like, if you're doing graphics, you wanna fill in some of the tape lines, you put that over. And they have one by uh, House of Color called intercoat clear that's what it's for to the same it's the same thing they're both do the same thing uh i don't know how good that product is but the one from uh house of color is really pretty good but that one seemed to work okay i haven't really tested a lot so i don't know it's just what i found and i was like oh let me try it. it's cheap so anyway we'll move on and put some real color on here I don't know how this looks in the camera. It looks a little different. The person doesn't look that as, as bad. You can see here, this is the original paint. And it's almost blendable. I think what's bleeding through here is a little bit of black. 
because what they did is they painted these black or the black sealer and then they put the color over that and so the black might be bleeding through in the jams because they didn't really coat them very well but you can kind of see it looks pretty close it's not that far off of the original has that same dirty look and looks pretty neat it looks I wait, can't wait to see you guys to see it in person they come to the shows you'd be pretty amazed it looks really cool and I think when it's all done it's gonna look amazing all right so I am seeing a little bit of sandy scratch in here and we can get up close enough to see it uh, so I might switch to 320 on the outside but on the jams this will be fine you might not even notice it when I get the clear on. Sometimes it magnifies it. It just depends on the color. Uh, there's a little bit like in the corners over here. It might be also because I'm using a mini gun and it's just not putting it on a very thick coat of paint. So it's always better thin. You know, thin's always better. It's I'm not saying this isn't isn't uh, the, the other way isn't the right way. I mean, it is the right way to do it, but it does work. Uh, so I might switch to 320 on the final and that's what I usually do on a really nice paint job or even 400 and then uh, try and get a little bit less sanding scratch in it on the outside and the jams I'm not really worried about it it's not going to be that visible so it's going to be very hard to see even at that so we'll probably try and get it rid of it though altogether on this deck lid I sanded this with 320 and there is absolutely no signs of sanding scratch in there so just so you know nothing so it just depends you know on the jams we're gonna try some different stuff on this I had some problems with the I forgot to put um, the uh, accelerator in the clear and I only had slow and it was really really cold out so this Tamco really likes to just keep going yeah. it's a little bit unpredictable if you ever want a really predictable clear uh, the Transstar E3. It's not high solids, but man, it's predictable. And the only thing I found with that is you have to go really slow on the hardener. Go to the slowest one or the the medium one will dry like fast. And the fast one, I don't know what that dries like. It must be like repair hardener or something like that. But the uh the slow one, actually at 60 degrees even, it'll be fine. It's really predictable. Put it on one coat, put another coat on, put a third coat on, done. Now, you guys who are in the other parts of the world, Capsi is just amazing. That's another really easy to spray clear. That one, it's a medium solid, so like medium high solids, kind of a, I'd say it's in the high 40s. And that one, you can put just one coat on, go back, hit another coat on, and it just flows out beautiful, really easy to spray. So if you're trying to do something, K A P. CI real cheap too I'm trying to get this in the light so you guys can see. I did not paint anything in this entire section. I did not even blend it. I just painted up to it. Uh, it's uh, You can't even see it really. It, it's right here, along there, and over to right here. It's all original paint with a little bit of clear on it. So, I mean, all I did, I, like I said, I didn't try to blend it. I didn't try and fog over it. You can still see through it right here. So 
that's how close the color match was. Let's even get it in different light here so you can see. Let me see here. Try and move this around a bit. You really, I mean, I had somebody say in the short that you, so you can see a little bit of silverier. It actually looks a little bit blacker if you look at it in person. But it's it's almost the same. It's almost exactly the same. Really, just right there, from there to there, there's that's original paint. So it's pretty darn close. So yeah, I was pretty excited about that. Well, I think I've got this thing kind of dialed in now, so that's over. I'll just put the fender on and double check the lines. I think they're pretty pretty good. They're a tiny little bit wobbly. It's all right because the fender beating will cover that. And these doors really, they don't die back at all. That's such a nice clear on there. So anyway, let's sand these, get these things ready. Tomorrow we'll get almost out of daylight here. We'll get on painting these or maybe in the morning. That's going to be hard to do when it's cold. Anyway, we'll move on with it. I'll just give these a little bit of medallion here. This stuff is nice and thick. It might shrink a little bit, but that's fine. I'll just let that dry overnight. Just a uh, little bit of filler showing. I found a high spot right there. So, anyway. I think it'll be good enough. There's a, there's a little bit of a hump right here. But see... I already know. I remember I think I did a dent right here in this door. So it's really hard to see something like that on its when it's round. It's easier to see stuff when it goes like this. So I'm going to leave that. So those are the types of things, like I said. You know, if I wanted to make it really, really perfect, I could do it. It just takes a lot more time. You're talking about 10 times as much work and you get about 2 to 3% results you know maybe five at the most it's really in my opinion not worth it so i just want to get it to where it looks really really nice and then that's as far as i'm going with it i mean everybody has that but you know, some guys you know they get they go for the award-winning show job and that's how you get it i mean you just keep working it until it's perfect and yeah we're not going to go there i'm just going to get it close all right, well, a lot of hand work's gone on here. Well, here we got this problem. Let's hope it doesn't rain. That's about all I got right down out of work, so I'm just going to have to do them. It's supposed to rain the next couple days, so I want to get these done. So anyway, can't leave the prep. Once you prep it, you got to paint it. Let it set for a couple days. You'll probably have to do it all over again. Solvent wash and it doesn't always cut it. It just sometimes it makes it worse.
All right, so I had to heat this up because it was so cold out. I only got slow and I put accelerator in it too, but kind of go right next to the holes and stuff like wherever it won't show. And hopefully I heated it up even enough. That looks a little bit smeary there. I need it just to be sticky. Pretty sticky. Kind of a little string to it, but not... Let's go along here because I tried to heat it up as evenly as I could. Now, if I didn't, <laughs> I will find out real quick because it will run on the next coat. So, yeah, that's pretty smooth for a first coat. I put it on a little bit heavier. This cut clear, you got to do that. You use Tamco, you go too dry on your first coat, you're going to not like yourself. So, <laughs> how about that? Hey, this, this is scary. Well, guys, we had some scary moments there. The clouds are just, just hanging. I saw some really thick ones coming and it looked like it was going to rain, but I did manage to get through paint this. I did lose, I didn't get all the footage for you guys because I just had to stop and just get it done because it was like, you know, it was scary. It's, but we are, we're dry to touch now. Let me see. It's dry to touch. You got it pretty smooth. There's very little orange peel. Well, then again, I'm laying flat, so it's kind of cheating a little. But still, it's still really hard. It's hard not to get a run with this paint, with this clear. So I did get a little heavy right there. And man, sometimes they just move the metallics and then you're screwed. But I'm hoping that will go down. If it doesn't, I can touch it up. That's the type of stuff when you're at home and you're doing something you're, you're going to get some stuff like that. And you just have to get good at, at touching up you get good at blending and fixing stuff and don't get freaked out and repaint the whole door just because there's one little spot in it. See if you can color sand and buff it out. If it doesn't come out and learn how to mask it. That's what we used to do in the body shop all the time, but yeah, it's, it's dry to touch now and it's super smooth. And yeah, this should shouldn't die back at all, really. Got a little model in the metallic, but you won't see that um, when it's standing up at all, as long as it matches. <laughs> That's what I'm worried about. Spraying it laying down, then spraying the rest of the body standing up. Hopefully, it does look the same. It should, but because I'm going to do the same technique and on the on that as I did on this, so. Not too much dirt in it either. That's the thing nice about this weather. Yeah, look at that. I mean, man, I was coming. It was worse than that. And I was going, oh, my goodness. And it's not forecasted to rain today, but it is tomorrow or the next day. And I was like, man, you know what? I just want to get these painted, get them done, and not be another week without uploading anything. Yeah, it looks really good. Those doors came out pretty straight. Let's see, this one here was the one with the wave in it. And you can see just a hair of it, but not much. That's good enough. Let's see, once it's got color sanded and buff, that'll smooth it out a little bit more. And then. When it's all together on the car and all the chromes on it, you're not going to see a damn thing. It'll look like a show car, but not really be one. So, anyway. Anyway, I think we got her good. I got one little fatty right here. I was trying to pull off these runs along the edge, and it kind of scraped that. But I think I can just get that little razor blade scrape and then buff it, and it'll be fine. So I did get enough on the first coat of clear. I got enough material on there, so that's so why I put it on nice and heavier on the first one than I should. But actually, it it then it then only need two coats instead of using three, and then three coats gives you more dirt, more potential for problems. So yeah, there's always that. So I try and keep, there's all all these things I do for a reason. But anyway, it's kind of hard to explain them all to you guys.
Anyway, going on and on. All right, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and see your comments, and hope you enjoyed the content so far.